always been a mystery to me How two hearts can come together And love can last forever But now that I have found you I believe That a miracle has come When God sends a perfect one Now gone are all my questions about why And I've never been so sure of anything in my life Oh, I wonder what God was thinking When He created you I wonder if He knew everything I would need Because He made all my dreams come true When God made you He must have been thinking of starts without me and I'm not there to see if the sun should rise and find your eyes all filled with tears for me I wish so much you wouldn't cry the way you did today while thinking of the many things we didn't get to say I know how much you love me as much as I love you and each time that you think of me I know you'll miss me too. But when tomorrow starts without me, please try to understand that an angel came and called my name and took me by the hand and said my place was ready in heaven far above and that I'd have to leave behind all those I dearly love. But as I turned to walk away, a tear fell from my eye all my life I'd always thought I didn't want to die. I had so much to live for, so much left yet to do. It seemed almost impossible that I was leaving you. I thought of all the yesterdays, the good ones and the bad. I thought of all the love we shared and all the fun we had. If I could relive yesterday, just even for a while, I'd say goodbye and kiss you, and maybe see you smile.
Father God, we are thankful to you for the blessing of life. Uh, and we recognize that in passing away, Lord, you are still God. Your word declares that you give life and you take it away. And as Job declared, blessed be the name of the Lord. So today, Father, as these that are gathered here before you have come to remember Stephen Carrington, Father, we ask that your spirit of peace, remembrance, your spirit of encouragement and hope that would reign supreme in this place and that every person gathered here, the family and friends, every person gathered here would feel the embrace of your presence and they would feel comforted. Take full control of everything that is to be said and done and I pray that everything will work out decently and in order. We ask these mercies and we give thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of love, born of His Spirit.
seats. This is my story. What would our story be at the end of our life's journey? At this time, I'm going to call on Mr. Wilson Carrington to do the eulogy. Good afternoon, all of you gathered here, and all of you viewing us on the online live stream, and all over the world, I may say. Stephen Carrington, a.k.a. Bab, Pope, Bago, to name a few of his aliases. Because everyone who answers his phone, I realize, had a different alias for him. Stephen will be lovingly remembered as the son of Peter Johnson and Lenora Carrington Greenaway, both deceased, and also Debbie, his dance partner and very close friends. Stephen was the third of six children, Winston deceased, Wilson, Christopher, Mary, and Christine. He was the father of one, a son who lives in Maryland and who is presently on an IT scholarship in Germany. He was the nephew of Tilda Wallace and Vilma, which is deceased. Uncle of Larry, Eric, Teddy, who is deceased, Terence, Sherilyn, Miguel, Kevin, Samantha, Rene, Karen, deceased, Natalia, Dakota, Kia, Kai, Makea, Titian, Cristiano, Sophia, Soraya, Jamak, and Krista, brother in law of Natalie, Carleen, Sherwin, and Andre, cousin of Lisa, Ricardo, and many, many more, friend of Bonnie, Dune, Hayden, Briggs, Ricky, Abigail, Ras, Wendy, Flo, Justin, and many, many more. A point I noted about Stephen was that 90% of his friends were stored with aliases named on his phone. Stephen had friends all over the world, I would say. For example, in Australia, Canada, Barbados, Germany, Sweden, and almost all the states in America. Not forgetting the ballroom dance fraternity of Trinidad and Tobago, and certain parts of the Caribbean, his taxi friends from the Port of Spain to St. James Route, and his former co-workers from Media Sales Limited. Strangely, with all his friends from all over, Stephen was a very private person so private that he never shared all his information with one person. Not even me, which he had a lot of conversation with since his childhood days. Talking to some of his friends from various parts of the world, I got to realize that what his friends in Germany knows, his friends in Maryland does not know. Even his friends in Enterprise, who he grew up with, does not know what his friends in Tobago's knows. Stephen will never put all his eggs in one basket, so to speak. I learned a lot about Stephen in the last few days. So have so has his other family members. Besides his love for ballroom dancing, which I think that trait came from his deceased mother, Stephen was always interested in what the other countries has to offer. Maybe that's why he traveled a lot all over. Stephen also loved to cook, always talking about busting a pot when the opportunity arrives. With all that was said, Stephen lived a very simple life. He never was interested in vanity, never was the flashy type, one of his favorite lines was, stay focused. I want to repeat that. One of his favorite lines was, stay focused. On a few occasions, sometime in the middle of our conversation, he would say, Terry, you see me? 
All I want is a place to sleep, transport, and to see the world. He always said this to me with his right hand under his chin, smiling. His four favorite countries he spoke about all the time were Canada, Barbados, Sweden, and America in that order. Stephen started feeling ill on the 31st of August, his last day in Canada. But he continued his two and a half month mini world tour, visiting Maryland, then New York. He refused to seek medical attention in America, although he was advised to do such. Luckily, he was able to make it back to Trinidad. On arrival to Trinidad, his close friend's sister, who is a medical doctor, on first sight, realized that is not, that is not the Stephen she knows. He was immediately rushed to the Arima Hospital where he was diagnosed with having a minor stroke. After a day, he was transferred to the Mount Hope General Hospital where he spent a few days before he was discharged. Stephen had to return to hospital on two occasions. This time his illness was more severe. On his third visit on Wednesday the 4th of October at 3.20 p.m., I saw our brother took his last couple of breaths. Attempts were made to revise him. However, his last, however, eight minutes later, the doctor said to me, he did not make it this time. Friends, well-wishers, in the last few weeks of his illness, Stephen was not able to do anything for himself. For example, he could not walk, could not eat on his own, etc. Stephen's body became lifeless. Although he was able to talk to some of his friends, telling them what was taking place with him, he did not want anyone to see him in that condition. Stephen cried and worried a lot during those last days. However, on his last day alive on this earth, Strangely enough, he did not shed a tear. Stephen, who you all know, the stammer at times, and like to put his hand under his chin and smile, had a brief conversation with me, which I shared with some of his family members. That's why I did not keep any celebration or wake for Stephen, which I had to respect his wishes. I hope you all will understand. Finally, I would like to publicly thank a few persons which I shall name on behalf of the family. Miss Annie, deceased, who raised Stephen from a very tender age. Dr. Denise DeGale McIntyre, the neighbors where he stayed. Neil, I cannot finish thank him enough. Cassandra, Asha, Mark, Jan, Ricky, who came far from far to help with putting him on the bed. Briggs also. Pillars of Truth Ministry, thank you all very much. Last but not least, Debbie, I will never forget all the troubles you had from day one with his illness in America. You took care of him and made sure he arrived in Trinidad, which he wanted. Additionally, Brother Kenny Mohammed, out, out, out in Boston, a pastor who he wanted to see before he returned. Once again, on behalf of the family, thanks to the various ballroom dance groups, all his friends from all over the world, thanks for the support I receive. Our brother, your friend, will be surely miss. May his soul be with the Lord until we see him in paradise. Thanks to all once more. Thank you very much for that extensive look back and memory of the life of Stephen. At this time, I'm going to call on Debbie to do the scripture reading.
the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord Amen. forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to leave a thought with you today. Uh, and it's a part segue from the psalm that was read. And one word is sufficient to describe that thought. And it's unexpected. We live in a world now where unexpected is expected. The same could be said about suddenly. Suddenly comes into our life unexpectedly. And it does many things. I listened to the eulogy that described the ill feeling that Stephen had and the build up all the activities that took place, place before his passing. And all of it seemed to be unexpected. He seemed to be a man that was full of life, enjoying life, traveling around meeting friends, having friends, maintaining friendships. And then unexpectedly, illness, sickness came his way. We all here today have experienced something unexpectedly. Just yesterday, there was a series of events in Sangre Grande that was totally unexpected. Everybody came out like a normal day to do the hustle and the bustle and to do the grind. And it started off with a young man losing his life after a tire exploded unexpected. Lost his life. Just further down the street, two men got into an argument that people just thought was an argument. One pull out a knife and stab the other one to death. Unexpected. Look at the events that are going on in our world today. Very much unexpected. To, some, to, to, to many degrees, they are unexpected. We are becoming more accustomed to unexpected. But I want to tell you a story, and I want to relate to you today how even in the unexpected, God is still in control. Because there is no situation that is outside of the power and the reach and the existence of God. There is no person, in spite of the unexpectedness of your situation, it is not outside the reach or the mercies or the grace of God. This point is highlighted in the scriptures in Mark 4, where Jesus 
and his disciples decided to take a little rest from the crowd and from the usual ups and downs of ministry. As you know, Jesus was with his disciples and he would meet people all during the course of the day and he would talk with them and he would minister to them. He would preach and teach and, and do whatever he had to do. And, and sometimes in doing the things that we have to do, we are a little bit tired and we need some rest and relaxation. Even our Lord, being 100% divine and 100% human, he, he was tired and he needed that little R and R. So he took his inner circle, his disciples, in Mark 4, it's described, and he went out onto the lake for a little time of peace. You know, when we want some peace, we go somewhere where there is nobody sometimes. And what we expect where there is nobody is peace. We expect a little serenity. We expect a little, the, the, the hustle and bustle of life to be nil. And so Jesus went out with his disciples just to have that time of peace. And what do you know? The unexpected showed itself up. It's as though unexpected has a mind of its own. There are some good, there are some, there are some experiences that we have that are unexpected, that are good, you know. A surprise visit from an old friend or a family member. It's a good thing. You may be in your home clothes or your pajamas or, 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 or just unprepared and you hear, you hear a knock at the door, talk, talk, talk. Who is that? And you move the curtain, but you can't see who it is. You have to go by the door and then voila, unexpectedly, it's somebody that you're fond of. There is the surprise birthday parties or get together that people planned without your knowledge just to surprise you. Unexpected. Wow. Rah. That is good. But then there are unexpected events that shakes us to the very core of our existence. There are unexpected events that touches us in places where we don't desire to be touched. Jesus took his men out and they were in this nice, warm and, and cozy fellowship, one with another out on the Sea of Galilee. And all of a sudden, the scripture said, all of a sudden, unexpectedly, the storm came. How many of you today are living nice, cozy, warm lives? Maybe you have experienced it in the past where everything was just normal, everything was good. It wasn't perfect, but everything was okay, manageable. And then all of a sudden, unexpectedly, tragedy, a phone call comes in, 2 o'clock in the morning. Someone comes up to you and gives you some sudden tragic news. Something has happened that would impact your life at that moment and for the future ahead. It happens to all of us. And so Jesus was there with his disciples and the scripture tells us he was so comfortable that he, he fell asleep in the stern of the boat and the disciples were there just mingling with each other while he was resting and then suddenly a storm came. The scripture described it as a raging storm. It, the waters and the waves bashed against the, the, the vessel and rocked and shake, shake it and, 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 and everybody was scared and frightened to the point where they looked at each other and they recognized or they admitted that we are going to die today, not realizing that in the time of that expected sudden uh, experience that the one who was able to control and bring to bear his power upon it was right there in the vessel with them. I want to tell you today that in spite of your circumstance, God is in the vessel. I want to tell you that in spite of the suddenness or the unexpectedness of your circumstance or your experience, God is right there just outside 
looking at everything and being in total control. The passing of someone doesn't mean that life is over. It means that we must draw from them, from their examples, from their life, from their memories, and that we must be better people moving on. Unexpectedly, it does not have to be the end of life. And so it is the disciples. You know, sometimes when the unexpected overwhelms us, we forget about everything. We, we, we're in a panic mode. We don't know how to think, what to do. We're, we're just up and down and just running around like, 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 like chickens without heads. Because we, we don't know what to do because it's so unexpected. We, we were unprepared. It was a surprise to all of us. But even in the surprise, I can't emphasize enough that God is still in control. And it takes a while for us to gather our thoughts and, 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 and recognize that in spite of how bad things look, God is right there with us. For it is he that keeps you through the unexpected. When you look back, the songwriter says, when I look around and see what the Lord has done for me, it makes me want to go all the way. Listen, when you look back, at your unexpected circumstance, you recognize that it was only God who gave you strength to make it through. It's not your intellect. It's not your education. Some of the things that overwhelms our life, we have no answers, no response to it. It is only the grace of God. We may not acknowledge it, but it's the grace of God that brings us through the unexpected circumstances of our lives. Friends, family, neighbors, they all help and support. But my, oh my. And we know it's God, you know, because in the midnight hours when, when it's just you and your thoughts, when it's just you and your memory, when it's just you and your pillow, and drawing from all of the experiences and all of the interaction when it's just you alone it's only the grace of God that embraces you and comforts you and strengthens you in your time of suddenness and suddenly so the disciples told themselves this is it we're going to die and they went to the front of the boat and they said Lord you're sleeping you're, you're resting here and and, and our lives are at risk. Maybe sometimes in your ex unexpected moments, you, you look at God and you say, God, where are you? Here I am. I have done my best to serve and to, 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 to do whatever I can. And, and you have abandoned me. Where are you? This is the worst day of my life. And, and you are silent. Let me remind you that when Christ was on the cross, God was just as silent. We ain't that special, you know. But in fact, he's not really silent. He is grace and his mercy is there, but we have to call upon him. Like the disciples recognize when the storm overwhelmed their boat, we have to regain our consciousness and call on Jesus Christ. And when we call in a time of trouble, he will answer. And so, when we call on God and he answers, he takes control of the situation. You see, it makes us realize that we are not really in control. When things are okay, we buff up our chest and, 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 and all is well and we walk and we strut because things are good. But when it's out of control, we need something higher, someone bigger, someone more powerful, someone all-knowing to sort things out. 
and it makes us realize that we are nothing. We are like the flower that comes up in the morning, fresh and colorful and pretty, and by noonday in the hot sun, we die and wither away. We are like the scripture says, a vapor. We appear but for a moment and we wither away, wither away right after we appear. We are nothing. But God is eternal. God is supreme over all your unexpected circumstances. Be encouraged. Be hopeful. In spite of what is to come, what will be in your life, God is in control. He is in control of the Middle East right now. He is in control of all of the places where there is unrest and war. He is in control, but he is giving man the opportunity to call on him and to trust him. Will you trust God in your circumstance today? The unexpected passing of Stephen Carrington. It hits home for many of you, I'm sure, in many different ways. And sometimes we sit here and we say, well, if I feel sick, I will go by the doctor. Me have played with that. I go and drink some bush. I go and see Trevor. Or they might die quicker. <laughs> but until we are in the situation, we don't know what it is like. But for sure, God is in control of the situation, even though we are not. So the psalmist in Psalm 23, as I conclude, he tells us, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Doesn't matter the circumstance. Doesn't matter how deep the valley is or how lonely the valley is. There is no place that God's grace cannot meet you. There is no circumstance too big for God not to surmount there is no amount of grace that you need that God cannot supply in your circumstance. Surely, goodness and mercy. Surely. Not maybe. Not hopefully. Surely in your circumstance. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. It follows you and it follows you and me, but we have to reach out and grab it sometimes. Surely goodness, God's grace and mercy follows us all the days of our life. And when we take hold of it, we will dwell in the house of the Lord even forever. Revelation 22 verse 1 to 4 tells us, that one day God would be our God and we would be his people. Scripture says he will wipe away every tear from our eye. There will be no more pain. There will be no more dying. There will be no more sadness. There will be no more weeping. For all of those things and much more like that would have been passed away. Behold, everything would have been made new. And the people of God would live the life that they were meant and created to live by God. May God bless you today. May God keep you. And be reminded that the unexpected will come. But God is bigger than the unexpected. Peace be unto you. Could we all sing? I think I lost track of my. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. As a matter of fact, could we go to to um, to the goodness of God, since we did the the um, psalm already. And before mm -hmm. before I do that, before I do that. Um, 
Is there anyone here who need one minute to share a thought or a memory? Pleasant good afternoon, family, friends, loved ones, and well-wishers. Firstly, please allow me to extend my heartfelt and sincerest gratitude on behalf of my family for the outpouring words of comfort, support, and condolences offered to us during this time of grief. It was very much appreciated. Today, we gather to celebrate the life of Stephen, a gentle soul whose quiet presence touched everyone who had the pleasure of knowing him. Stephen was a man of few words, but his actions demonstrated his love, dedication, and unwavering character. Based on the remarkable turnout today, I can surely attest that he touched all of our lives positively in one way or another. The time we spent living together will fondly be remembered. As I can speak, I can vividly recall walking in on him numerous times in the living room, dancing away by himself, as though holding an imaginary dance partner to the music on the radio. I just used to shake my head and smile, and he would just grin and continue unbothered. Pope, as you elegantly grace this ballroom, we call Earth for your last dance. I wish to thank you for the love, support, and precious memories over the years, as I know you would continue dancing the night away amongst the angels in heaven forever. May your soul rest in peace. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Gary Wardrop. I'm the Vice President of the Long Circular Rights and Rules Taxi Association. Um, Stephen, <laughs> this guy taught us a lot. Simpler as you're watching this guy in his box said, we taught us a lot. Um, I know Stephen for over 20 years. That's how long we know. The guy that walked out when the things now start here, Stephen was very close. And he couldn't, he couldn't take it. He had us to walk out. He couldn't take listening to what was going on because he and Stephen was that close. And they work on Rison Road, that little area, for over 20 years. One thing about Stephen, I could tell you that, you know, he, he taught us about togetherness. As his brother said, he leave a pocket of information for everybody in small spaces. Here you'll get, you know that about Stephen, and here we'll know that about Stephen. I didn't even know his name was Stephen. We call him Bego. That we know him as Bego. Everybody understand know him as Bego. And if there's one thing he taught us is that no matter what, no matter the differences of race, of whatever, togetherness, the love staying together, being that close and keeping that bond, no matter where you came from, he taught us to always be a family. You understand? He taught us that the difference of growing and knowing where you are is being together. No matter the different ethnicity or whatever, there because on that stand there is Indians, there is Negro, there, there is there's the full the full variety, and he was a guy that embraced everybody, everybody. No matter he always had a big smile on his face. No matter what you tell Bego, that smile will be there. You could tell Bego up, you could tell Bego down, he will be smiling, and he taught us to stay together, love one another, continue being each one another's keeper and growing together. And we will always remember him that. He may be gone, but his name will always be 
remembered on the Rising Road stand, Bigo will live on forever in our, our lives. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Bernadette Angelina James. And I, on behalf of my family, I know Stephen from a very young guy. My aunt adopted him from small. And when we grew up at Londonville to see our aunt, he used to run and hide. I used to go on and pull him because he used to pee by the side of the wall. I used to go and hold him. I said, come here. I said, when we come, don't run and hide. We all are family. And then they came down at Enterprise to live. And he grew up there. My aunt passed away. He buried my aunt. He said, it's better to live than to bury her dead. So on behalf of my family, but the last time I saw Babs is when he came back. I said, boy, you know how long I ain't see you? I said, well, let us go over. He said, no. He said, he get his visa. I said, thank God for that. I said, very good. He said, just now we're going and travel. So he started flying about, flying, flying. The last time I saw him again, he introduced me to his friend. I said, thank God. I said, we will get in cake just now. He started laughing, he put his hand. He said, you mad? He said, just now. Just now, then he gone, he came back, and I finally get very small, but I didn't tell him anything, not knowing that Baz was in hospital, and I did not know. If I had known, I would have gone and see him, because I accept him as a brother, a cousin, everything. The way he grew up with us, it was loving. Everybody had loved Babs. Everybody's popes, Stephen, Babsy. My daughter and I just call him Bab Zin. You understand? So he's a very loving person. I cannot say nothing bad about popes. He's very good to us. And he helped me out in a very special way, which I wouldn't tell anybody. Same as he is secret, I is secret too. <laughs> so I wouldn't tell anybody that. So may Lord rest his soul in peace. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, condolences to each and every one here because Stephen has touched each and every one in a different way. He was a very kind-hearted person who would want us to remember him, not with tears, not like me right now, in our eyes, but with happy thoughts and smiles. That ends in life, not a relationship. Although he's not here in this earthly form, I know his memories would live on. And if he was here, he would say to us, I know, I know he would have said to us, I'm going to dance in all the galaxies. Very short, but he is a person that touched each and every one, and including myself. So thank you, and may his soul rest in peace. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Aiden Celestine. Stephen Carrington. We both grew up together. He has been with me from mechanics days to sports to media days. One thing I always admire Stephen for is his retainer, mine. I will go some places and you will see a young lady. Her pops will say, Hayden, do you remember a girl? Like Sharon, we meet in some party. She had a red dress 
Ich bin zu einem Polka dort. Und so, so, so. Als sie Pops hol. Pops hol genau 15 Jahre ago hin. <lacht> das Fälle hat eine Routine. Was nicht easy. At the, one of the best moments I had with him, he loved his dancing. He carried me to dance all inclusive. When I tell you I had a ball in that all inclusive, free food, free drinks. But I was not a dancer, so I stand up at the bar and only ordering drinks and eating while the whole dance crew just dancing. He was a fella, very honest, true. Anytime I call for Pops, he's there. He always there for me, always there. Anything, he there. Is a fella I'll really be best. My name is Hayden Celestine. We grew up together. He used to work in mean cannings. He used to work with me in media sales. He used to work me in sports. He used to work with me every carnival Monday and Tuesday. He was my lead barman when I'm doing sports. And he will really be missed. The thing is about him, when we work in, I would like to say condolences to his family and everyone else. But in closing, when we fall out, I used to always tell him, I grew up very respectful to respect my elders. He was just three days older than me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, youngster. Let's sing together.
the regality of today. We have heard more the description of a life that was lived well. Father, all of these here gathered here are left behind. Still, the life's journey ahead of them. And so, Father God, I pray your strength be available to them, your peace, your comfort, your assurance. More importantly, hope, O oh Lord. That in the coming days, in the weeks, and the months, tonight, tomorrow night, the midnight hours, the lonely moments, Father God, that you would present yourself in your arm that they may lean on and that they may depend on, and that you, O oh Father God, would keep them. I pray that they would strengthen each other and that they would draw from this experience that life is fragile and that we ought to love and care for each other better than we are doing at the moment. So Father, keep them, comfort them, surround them with your peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and give thanks. Amen. For as much as it has pleased the Almighty God in His wise providence to take out of this world and to end His journey, I therefore, as a minister of the gospel, do commit this body back from whence it came. We look forward for the life of the world to come through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and whose second coming in glorious majesty, the earth and the sea shall give up their dead. The corrupted bodies of those who sleep in Christ shall be changed and the bodies of those alive and remaining shall also be changed and made like unto his own body of glory. This shall be done according to the mighty working whereby God is able to subdue all things unto himself. John speaking, then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Right. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors and their works will follow them. Father, thank you for the life of Stephen Carrington. His journey is complete. Father, the memories that we shared, spoken about. Father, the impact that he has made on so many lives today. That they have shown up to support. Lord, we thank you collectively. And we ask, O oh Father God, that you would receive his body and that you would keep his soul from whence it came, so that on that day when you return, Lord, you will give every man the reward that is due for the labor he has done. May his soul rest in peace. God bless you all and have a seat. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord He is trampling out the vintage Where the grapes of wrath are stored He has loosed his faithful lightning up His terrible whistle It's true
He's my brother. 